you know, I've, I've tried to start businesses that are disruptive. We started the streaming industry. I had the first all high-def TV network, changing the drug industry now. And when you get to mess up, you know, the, the people who have been there the whole time, what feels better than That's that? That's so good, yeah, right? you know, it's Disrupting, exactly. Yeah. Well, Mark, thank you for coming on. Yep. So it's only right it's fucking you. Perfect, it's only right, right? right? <laughs> Mav, Maverick, we've always talked about we've that We've always forever, talked right? about that yeah. forever, right? We've been friends and known you for a long time. Um, we're also Pittsburgh, Ohio, Akron. Close, close yeah. Close to the same yep. place. But the thing I've always admired about you is you always tried new things. Right? I mean, since the kid, I was reading about you. I didn't realize that like, you wanted to go to business school early. Yeah. Then you went to IU because it was a business school. It wasn't expensive. Like, but you've always been able to, to kind of find to your point where you can get in the cracks and just dis- get disrupt. an edge. Yeah, yeah. Well, how can I? Get where did edge? that come from for you? I think, you know, my dad did upholstery on cars. So if you got a rip in your seat, right? That's you took it to where he worked. My mom did odd jobs, and you know, it was pure middle class. And neither one of them went to college. My mom was twenty when I was born, and neither of them had much experience with life. Right? My dad was in the military um, for a while, then got this job. And so they were always like, you're going to have to figure it out. Oh, they would you tell gotta, you that. Yeah, you got to figure it out. Because we're not leaving you anything. Yeah, Yeah, and it, I mean, we don't know anything. You know, if you want to get into business, you have to figure it out. Go read, go to the bookstore. I'll take you to the library, whatever. But you got to figure it out. And I think that's just always stuck with me. You got to figure it out. You know, a lot of people, I need a mentor. I never wanted a mentor. I wanted to figure it out by myself. <laughs> right? yeah. I want that satisfaction of going through. It's just like if you're on the court working on your jumper and you start, you know, getting on a roll and it's going through, yes. right? It, it feels good. It feels great, yeah. Right? That's that feeling. And business is the same way where you're learning something and learning something and learning something. And then all of a sudden, I got it. It clicks. I got it. I know exactly what I need to do. I know where the edge is and I know how I'm going to mess up all these other folks. When you started uh, what became broadcast, uh-huh. audio net, yeah. it was audio net first, right? How did you know that needed disrupted? That industry needed a disruption because you know, again, Todd and I went to school in Indiana, and literally to listen to an Indiana basketball game, go Hoosiers, um, we would sit at a desk or whatever with a speakerphone, and then somebody in Bloomington, Indiana, would have a speakerphone. And they'd put it next to a, a radio. Oh, wow. Well, you were committed. Yeah. So I was just like, wait, let me see. Because I'm a tech guy at that point. Let me see if I can figure it out. So bought an old Packer Bell computer, set it up in second bedroom in my house, and just started learning. Learning, learning. Went to a local radio station and said, okay, we've, there's this new thing called the internet. We think it's going to turn into audio and video, just like cable TV changed TV. Can I connect to your board and then take it back to my house and put it on this website? So anybody can listen to a replay of any of your shows. What? Why not? Go for it. Next thing you know, we had 100 users in a day, 1,000 users in a day, 10,000, 100,000. Within 18 months, it was just like blew up. And so we knew. And I remember literally. You knew you had it, yeah. Knew, knew without a doubt. Because we didn't have to market, didn't have to spend a penny. Everybody told everybody, this is the way to listen to this or this. And I remember standing in front of 30 employees at the time and just saying, but look, if we bust our ass, this company is going to be worth $5 billion. And if we do it right, we're going to crush it. And if we don't, we'll be friends. Yeah. And that was in 1995. By 2000, out of the 330 employees we had, 300 became millionaires. Wow. Yeah, and the 30 awesome. who didn't just started too late. Right? Yes. It, you know, it, in hindsight, it seems really obvious, right? Streaming and of course. everything. Yeah, yeah. But then, but then, then people thought we were idiots, right? But it came from just a need. That's what most is like a it was human just obvious, Yeah, and then all of a sudden it was just like, wait, okay, you got this radio station in Dallas and people all over the world were able to listen to this station. We, we were getting calls from the Aleutian Islands and this and that, right? And I'm like, oh, this is crazy. And then we started, um, the laws were different back then. We'd go to the local store and we'd buy these CDs and we'd just put them on and you could just listen to any CD. And we would make these internet radio stations. We had 400 radio stations. We had police scanners on Anything and everything we can come up for content. Then we started doing video and then hooking up with, you know, networks and this and that. It just took off. Took off. Yeah, it was everything that it is today before right. it was. Yeah, yeah exactly. Everything right. that we do today. When you're in a business like that and you found the disruption, right? Because we go through that a bit, right? Like we started this uninterrupted and then we 
turned into a media company, but it was like from this human thing of like, athletes need a place to tell their story. Mm -hmm. But now since we've done it, everybody's doing it, right? Mm -hmm. But we stay the course, we stay on it. Widen the aperture, pivot. How do you, when you look at a business or even with, with AudioNet, how did you know we got to stay in it or it's time to pivot it? Because I'm sure, because I'm sure people yeah, started coming behind that, you. Too. Yeah, and it, it wasn't so much AudioNet because we were rolling. We were, we became the king really fast. But every, every entrepreneur gets into that business where it's like, oh, this isn't what I thought, right? Or somebody came along and, you know, it's hard to make that decision whether you zig or zag or you close. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not so much companies that I've started. Well, but more companies, some companies I've invested in and, and having conversations with entrepreneurs, like, you know, we, this was the vision we had. This is the path we hoped things would take. This is something we needed for that to happen. It just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Or they just did it better. Yep. And we talk about what our product is and why we think what we need to do to differentiate trust. It's so hard to trust anymore, particularly in healthcare. So, you know, knowing what sets us apart and that's how... I know to keep going, even though I'm in an industry where I'm the small guy. Yep, and you just keep going. You keep going. Because you know you're on to the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. We don't spend a nickel on advertising, right? Because someone, you know, someone saves money on their medication. You're telling everybody else. Yeah, and that's a, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah, and you have that trust. So if somebody else comes in and we're big insurance company, we're we're big pharmacy company, no one's gonna trust them. Yeah. But as long as I, I'm transparent and I keep on building that trust, I'm good. Yep. And I keep on going. If I ever lose that trust, that's when I have to close. Yeah. And that's you're in the trust business in that case. Yep. And you know, and how do you think of all that? How do you anticipate all that? How do you integrate it and make it work in a business? You know, there's always going to be opportunity, but you just got to be continuously curious. Totally, totally. And that's my, my favorite quote from Einstein is I have no special talent. I'm just passionately curious. The only reason why I'm sitting here with you and know you and get to work with the people I do at my company is curiosity. I just love to learn about things and know about shit. It's Having watched you now for 20 years, right? It's like the curiosity part is obvious, but the fact that you're adaptable. And to me, that agility is critical. And, you know, and it's one of the things I try to have because like, it's like, Mav's into what? <laughs> Mav's doing what? And there you are and you're good at it, right? You didn't do it half-ass. And there's times when it's like, okay, you tried it, didn't work, or we, you know, you're moving on. But that curiosity, to use that curiosity, you have to be agile. Yes. That's because things are always going to change. And the people who are just stuck in their ways, they're going to You have to be open to change. Right? You have to be open to change because that's the only constant. That's, the, that's a good point. That's the only, yeah, it's, it's just like you said, that curiosity, that agility. And I actually like to I like embrace yes. it. I'm like, cool, great. I got to move. I move to this city, whatever. Come on, I like it. Most, most because you can learn do, more. Yeah, you learn more. Most people don't do it. No, they don't. And that's a huge edge, yes. right? No, you stay the way you want to be. You keep on doing it that way. It's like when I got to the NBA. They weren't changing. They could come at me whatever they want. I was like, whatever, I'm going to be me. You were the first, well, Jerry and Well, football, Jerry, yeah. Jerry did, but, but like you were the first owner. Like me, I can remember a kid, 99, I was 18. I loved NBA basketball. I couldn't have named you one NBA owner. Well, Jerry Buss here. You were the first owner that like people that I knew well, I could I point on the street. I was 41 years old, man. And I was just like, let's go. It started off for me as an easy business. Like yeah. when I first bought the team, because they were all old guys just sitting there. They were up old guys, yeah. And they didn't care, right? It was just a business. They inherited the team. They bought one in a poker game or yeah. whatever. And I came in and I was just raising hell. I yeah. was screaming, yelling. And so I remember one time right after I bought the team, we were playing in Minnesota and I was like, I'm just trying to get to know everybody. And so you know how the, the guys, the equipment people sit on the floor? I'm like, I'm going to sit on the floor next to them. <laughs> I got fined $100,000 for just for sitting on the floor. They called it conduct unbecoming an owner. All the other really? owners, all, all the other owners went batshit. And then the next meeting we had, the next Board of Governors meeting, I was sitting in there and one of the old, old school owners, long gone now, was like, I don't know who the F you think you are, but you haven't done effing anything in this league. You wow. effing mother effing <laughs> fuck. And David Stern was like, chill. I'm like, and then I called the guy by the wrong name. <laughs> On purpose? No, I, I didn't know his just name. name. Yeah. I just, you know? And so, and I mean, they would just kill me. And I would get into sure. the refs. One time I ran on the court. Like, yeah, you were the first owner to like argue. 
openly have. Open I was the only one to sit by the court. Yeah. Right. I sat right. Yeah, next you to started the, sitting court. I only used to sit in suites. Right. I mean, now at home, I sit right next to the bench, and on the road, I sit in the second row. Yep. You know, right with the coaches, and they used they used to find me because, like, in a huddle during a game, I'd stand right there and listen. Right. Not because I was going to tell them what to do, because I, I'm like, you hit- I would. I told David Stern, like, do you sit in your sales meetings? Do you sit in your management meetings? That's a great point. Do you want to learn what's going on? And you figure out, like, when guys are starting to tune out a coach, right? You can, you know, you see what happens, you know, and you, you know, but being right there, that's how I learned. That's I a good point. I learned a lot. It's your business. You want to get in you, it. You yeah. got to learn it, right? If, if, if I don't know it, then you're always dependent on somebody else. When you're building a team in a business, first you have to define what business you're in. Most people don't even know what business they're in. Exactly. When I came to the NBA, I was like, what business is the NBA in? We're in the basketball business. No, you're not. You know, you're in the experiences business. And the media business. Yeah. And, and, yes. and experiences. Yeah. Experience. Because when you go to a game, you don't remember the dunks. You can't think of five games ago what happened, right? But you remember who you were with. Yep. You remember what it felt like. So first you got to know what business you're in. And then you got to know what your mission is. In the NBA, it's simple. We want to win championships. Yep. How you get there is not easy, and there's a lot of things out of your control. But in business, once you know what business you're in, how do you get there? What do you have to do? How do you sell? How do you create? And then as you grow, how do you align all the incentives? And that's what you're talking about. Because if you can align them, then, okay, you know your role then. Yep. It's like basketball there, yep. right? Somebody's got to pass the ball. Somebody's going to be the score. And sometimes you switch roles. You just got to know what role you're in. Business is the exact same way. But the thing I've always admired about you is you really just go after it. You really, that's kind of your mantra. Now, you obviously always go after it in a very thoughtful, smart way. I don't know about that. (laughs) (laughs) I could give you a lot of examples where that wasn't the case, but yeah. But but that's part of it too, right? When When you think about our motto at Spring Hills, make it till you make it. That's kind of our thing. It's like sometimes you're gonna fuck it up, and but That's you just keep way. after. Well, yeah, because right? if it was a straight line, everybody would do it, right? Yes. it would be easy. This, you're always going to have ups and downs. I mean, look what you guys have done. I mean, nobody starts a media and entertainment company, and it works, <laughs> yeah. right? And particularly for athletes and friends and everything. And you guys have got all this great management and business skill, but at the same time, ninety nine percent fail. Totally. And by the way, sometimes. You know, we have the company now. This this morning, I was on a call prepping for our next board meeting. I was like, I don't think I know if I know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know if I know what I'm doing. I still <laughs> Everybody has that imposter I still, syndrome. I was like, fuck, I don't know if I know what See, I'm See, when doing. you take all that money, then you got to do that board meeting. It changes, doesn't it? It changes. It all changes. It changes, Mark. It changes. And it does it ever stop changing? No. People think about raising money, you know, that's an accomplishment, right? It's an obligation. It's a total obligation. You did? Did you have a board before then? No. Fuck no. no. Right? I mean, and I did what I wanted to do, and I woke up. You're an entrepreneur. Yes. You know, it works, and you keep on riding with it, right? And it was only after I sold companies that I had to deal with a board, which I hated because it's a it, different game. It's a different game, right? You got the GC, your general counsel, the lawyers, right, who tell you what you can and can't say. Yeah. Then you got okay, the CFO, because once you start having to hire all these people that are trying to take you to the next level, they're trying to take themselves to the next level too. Totally. And it's a different game from when you're the entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's your baby and it's your company. And it, it, it's a skill to figure all that. So credit to you guys. So you wake up every day. What do you consider yourself? Do you think of yourself as an entrepreneur, as a yeah. sports guy? No. Me- now you're in the media business, that big yeah. way shark tank. Yeah, just an entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm an entrepreneur in your through heart. and through. Here's what I tell my kids. I said, look around. I said, look at that light. Look at that camera. Look at that couch. One day it didn't exist. Yep. Then somebody had the idea. And now it's made it from whoever this person was or people were to in front of us. Anything that's not natural, right? Anything that's man-made, somebody had that idea. Why can't it be you to Go have that idea? It. Go for it, right? Your idea might not work, but so what, right? It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times you get it wrong, right? Then you get it right one time. Yes. You're the luckiest motherfucker on the planet, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. You got to get it right once, exactly. Oh, you just got to get it right once. My name is Maverick because my grandmother ran up. After I was a gambling house and the TV show was her favorite show. She, what? She taught me how to gamble. With as a James kid. Garner Maverick. James Garner. That's, that's how the na- that's how the Mavericks got their name. Really? From James Garner. Really? Yes. 
Tell me, I never knew that. What's yeah, the story? I mean, it, the, the way the story was told to me is that Don Carter, the owner of the time, and him were friends. I guess he's from Dallas or Texas or whatever. James Gardner is. And they were talking about it and thought, okay, you know, you're a Maverick, James Gardner. Your show's Maverick. That's a great name because Maverick in Texas and Dallas. We'll call them the Mavericks. That's how I got my name. It was brothers, Brett and Bart. Their last name was Maverick. People yeah. was Brett, Brett Bart, Maverick. Brett, yeah. Brett, exactly. Yeah. And but she taught me how to gamble as a kid. So I I like the feeling of something's on the line. It's weird. I can't. No, it's great. I That's like great. that the money's on the line. I'll get up. You know, if you gamble, you get up some. You take some off the table. Fine. So as an entrepreneur, I wake up with that feeling yep. every day that something's on the line. Like, it could all go wrong tomorrow. Well, well, I, yeah, I kind of, that, like, do you part, still right? like that? Oh, hell yeah. You get that, you get that, that juice in you, right? Where you get so amped up, right? Yeah. So you're preparing for something, you're learning. And then when you come to that point where you think you found something yeah. that gives you an edge, right? So good. That's when you, it's just like, that's like making the game winning shot. Even though you haven't finished anything yet, right? You know, where it's just like, you get so fired up. And it's like, well, what motivates you to keep on going? It's like, I want to keep on kicking ass because yes. that feeling of getting that juice going and getting excited, that never goes away. Never goes away. And it, like when we're in a meeting with the team or something, I'm like, when I or I have a day in the office, where I'm like, we fucking know what we're doing. We got it. But on the flip side, that feeling sometimes can build up on me and like, feel like a wall sometimes like shit what's gonna happen tomorrow if that you start overthinking oh no it. no no because you start going go like, wrong because you because you when, start going you're reading you, you read something in the in the in articles like the market's changing streamers are spending less blah, blah, blah. fuck what are we gonna do that's part of our you know oh i know that no, i no, guess you know scary, that yo, it's I know scary, scary you get yo, scared it's like oh, oh shit <laughs> like i don't want to leave the house like, what do I, I do now what yeah. do i do now that yes, it's yes. the flip side oh that you have to power through those but that's what makes a great entrepreneur, great. Yeah. It's a competition, right? You know, sometimes they run a play, you don't expect them to play, to exactly. run, right? And so it's like, oh, I mean, I can't tell you how many times in my life that stomach is just dropped. It's dropped. Dropped. But it doesn't stop that. It doesn't, doesn't stop. stop. That it... fear does not stop, right? Because now you're at the next level. Yes. And you're always looking around going, okay, what, who's, who's here now? And then you have that imposter syndrome, right? I still get that. It's just like, Oh shit! Look at the people in this room. Why am I here? Why me? <laughs> Why am exactly. I exactly? And I always tell happen to me. Our team. It's funny, as an again, as you say, thinking about like an athlete. I always think like, when you're a great athlete, as a youngster, you're good in elementary, and then the world goes, okay, well, can you be good in high school? Mm -hmm. and then you're good in high school, and like, well, can you be good in college? And you're great in college, like, well, can you be good in the NBA? And then you win in the NBA, they're like, can you win again? It's like I always tell the team. All being great does is afford you a bigger platform and a chance to be great again. You know, and, and in sports, it, it's actually, it's hard. It's almost impossible, but it's still easier yes. in business because there's always a new season. There's a new season. I was, yes. Right? There's always a new season. And somebody ages out. Yes. Right? They're gone. Mike yes. is still not playing, right? Yeah. No one plays forever. Yeah. Um, but in business, there's still Warren Buffett doing there's his still, thing. McDonald's still, is still here. Google right? still, still here. Still still. Yes. And you're still competing. You know, and I, you know, I have all these stupid sayings that I use to like motivate myself, but it's like when you run with the elephants, there's the quick and the dead, yep. right? And so if, if you're agile and you're quick and you're learning and you're curious, you can beat the big guys, right? They're easier to beat, but once you get there, like you were saying, man, you look around and you just wait, now I'm dealing with the real players, right? Now, this, yeah. <laughs> now it's the, the big power boys, play. yeah, with the big boys, right? And then even when you're the big boy sometimes, right? You don't want to be the big boy. No, you, know? you don't want to, you don't want that feeling. No. No. I never want that feeling. I agree. Never. You're so I agree, right. Because like people will come and go, oh, man, you've made it, you did so great. And I'm like, thank you. But because being, you know, you want to be humble, but I'm really going like, no, in my head, I've not. I haven't done shit. Talking to the next generation, the younger generation. I'm like, I'm still trying to kick their ass. I'm not <laughs> exactly. done yet. Yeah. You know? You're not done yet. And that feeling, that drive is what keeps you going, keeps yeah. you like, I gotta keep trying something new, trying to make something always. new, a new idea. Always. What's next, what's new? And to your point, I'm always, like, I always look around like, what's the next fucking idea? Yes, yes. Well, you know, particularly in media and entertainment. Because it, it changes so fast. Every minute of every, every day. Every minute it's The changing. dollars change, and there's so many external influences, right? Where's the money? What's interest rates, you know? What's Netflix going to do? The big guys merge and sell, and they demerge and merge. You know, all the time. how long is television going to hold up, right? Yep. And if it's not streaming, you know, and what about short form? You know, how much is short form going to impact? It's like, are kids not going to watch long form movies or full NBA or NFL games? Are they only going to watch TikTok style. Yep. How you deal with that? You know, what's next? Yep. 
Which, to your point, it's so you have to be. It's the good. It's the good of it because it allows a company like ours to spring out of nowhere. Yeah. But for it also, you've just now we're bigger. And where's someone else coming? We have to stay there's, agile. There's always somebody coming there's for the always king. Always somebody. Right? <laughs> always. The king don't get to eat forever. Exactly. <laughs>